Why would you ever want to see an alien fight the Terminator? <laughs> That's just silly. It's way better if the alien is the Terminator. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matt. Sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Alien Terminator. I'm trying to cut back on soda. Give me a break. Hello, James Cameron. I'm called Matt, and Alien vs. Avatars vs. Titanic might have put fights in the mix, but they're not the originals. No, this takes us all the way back to 1995. Let me tell you, the people behind Alien Terminator are exactly the people you expect. It was written and directed by Dave Payne, the man behind such hits as Showgirl Murders, as well as being series director on Fred the Show. He also directed a movie called Alien Among Us. Of course, the entire cast is also no stranger to cheesy 90s flicks, with the lead role going to famed B-movie scream queen Maria Ford. I mean, she's no Linnea Quigley, but this box is apparently a part of the Maria Ford collection, so she's got some clout. It also says, five scientists, five miles down, five minutes to live. Despite this movie being about six scientists, two miles down with two hours to live. So let's see who would win. An Alien Terminator? This is Alien Terminator. The film opens on a very convenient bit of exposition, informing us that six scientists are living deep underground, with only one way in or out. An ungodly long ladder. After the credits, we see some science equipment, including the most important piece of equipment. Yes, this is Dr. Newton Fuller, and he's making cocaine. But his high gets him carried away as he drops a test tube, which he then cuts himself on and bleeds everywhere. Now, when my virus invades the human target, it will increase strength, decrease moral inhibition, and trigger a state of actual violence. Why would you want that? Unless you're just transparently evil? Oh, it's a corporate-backed project. Okay, that checks out. We meet the rest of the crew sitting down to dinner. Not the best place to be considering what this is a ripoff of. But it's the 90s, so look at all the cool computer shit, including a power glove. So Newton feeds his rats the virus, then takes a big ol' hit off the bong. But a weird little creature eats its way out of the rat. And the cage. And the lab! So now it's time for a sex scene. Hey, did I mention this is a Roger Corman production? And you guys unfortunately won't be able to see this unless you watch the movie for yourself, but she's definitely not a natural. I kind of gotta wonder what the overlap between serious geologists that could get a job on a scientific expedition and women with breast implants is. I'm sure it's not zero, but I feel like it's pretty low. Then again, the lead scientist on this project is a stoner with a soul patch and a nose ring, and one of the others looks like Billy Ray Cyrus circa 1988. It's like they took the cast of a Teens in the Woods slasher and just decided they should be scientists. Meanwhile, this character thinks a cat has gotten into his room, but nope, it's the virus monster. They find his body and rush him to the ER, and he makes it? Lame. McKay... That's, uh, Maria Ford's character, goes poking around where that other guy got cut, and gets cut. Shocker. Although she doesn't pass out and look dead. We get a pointless scene of some tits, and then we see McKay typing her diary. Would make it out of here 
alive. With creepy read-along robot turned on, I guess. Dean, that's uh, this guy, flushes all of Newton's drugs, which is a dick move. But hey, coach is up and looking good this morning. And uh, uh, remember that chest burster joke I made? Turns out it's not a joke. I'll be honest, this movie isn't that similar to Alien or Terminator. Frankly, without that name, 90% of this movie could still be considered somewhat original. Cliché to be sure, but not a ripoff of anything specific. So why, in the middle of all of that, would you just do the most popular scene from Alien? Everyone knows about this scene, and everyone knows you didn't come up with it. The DNA structure of this organism is such that it needs a host bacterium so it could be cloned and reproduced. Talk in English! Uh, that made sense, actually. The alien needs a host to live. What part of that didn't you understand? I, I say alien because, you know, it's a ripoff of alien, but this thing was made in a lab underground. How is that an alien? It did terminate someone though, so I'll let that one slide. There's two hours before the doors are unsealed and according to Newton, it would be catastrophic to let the creature escape. What follows is a fairly decent scene of them poking around trying to find the creature. I, I have nothing negative to say about it. It's clearly not as suspenseful as Alien, mostly because Alien had already proven itself scary by this point, but it's as good as this movie's gonna get. I'm sure he has a code word. Simple. What did he love more than anything down here? Cocaine? The girls get suspicious of Newton for having a radio phone. Meanwhile, I get suspicious of the prop department because I can see the orange tip on this gun. And the girls discover Newton's secret about the violence virus. Anyways, the not-so-alien Terminator kills Newton before Newton can poison it, and it looks like the poison ended up up in the vents. I'll go. Give me a gun. And preferably one without an orange tip. Unfortunately, the veil of poison is broken, so they determine their best option is to get the fuck out and nuke the place. And just in time, too. Weirdly, though, the power goes out. Why is that weird? All the main breakers are up top, in Earthpex's hands. That's right, they're being sabotaged by Wayland Industries. I mean, Earthtech. That's what the evil company is called in this movie, Earthtech. Oh, and the billionaires at Earthtech own a news station. Ha <laughs> ha, glad that's fictional. So now they're stuck inside with the Terminator, so they pick McKay as a decoy to lure the Terminator into a trap. But at the last second, it grabs... a... Uh, boobs girl. I never got her name. And her boyfriend is very distraught by this and wants to go back. Which is an improvement over Aliens vs. Avatars, where the romance just goes nowhere. Points to Alien Terminator, I guess. Although he has to go and make it weird. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Close your eyes. It's okay. But by that point, A.T. has made it up top where McKay and Billy Ray are, and we finally get a good look at it. <laughs> oh, that's the best thing in the movie yet! Also, Boyfriend made it up to where they are in record time, apparently. Bullets seem to distract A.T., but not kill it. Luckily, the hatch that was locked gets unlocked for no reason. They make it to the exit door and get attacked. So Billy Ray has a very funny fight with the creature, and they escape as it all blows up. And the CEO of Earth Tech goes full Neil Breen. Our crewmates were not so lucky. Were you ever suspicious of Dr. Fuller? Did you ever get a clue that he wasn't working in the best interests of the crew? Newton was smart, he had us all. It's too smart for his own good. Open the door! Newton forgot the number one rule in science business. One, you know, two, screw with Mother Nature. three. What can do now? The end. And that's Alien Terminator, a film that feels about as original as the title Alien Terminator. Yeah, this one's a little mixed. There's moments where it feels like it could break through and be something better, but it never does. It just feels dull and uninventive. 
it's not as insufferable as Aliens vs. Titanic, but it's also not funny or silly outside of the few shots of the creature. It's a movie where a monster kills people. Amazing. These three movies really highlight the three main ways bad movies turn out. Aliens vs. Avatar is hilariously awful, which gives me plenty of material. Aliens vs. Titanic is painful and obnoxious, which gives me plenty of rage. But this is just boring, which gives me very little to work with. And despite the creature not being an alien, this has nothing the fuck to do with Terminator and is more of an alien ripoff. So, it puts it in the same ballpark as Terminator 2 Shocking Dark. Although, that's probably the most insufferable movie I've ever reviewed, so... Maybe not the most fair comparison. Well, these films have inspired me to write my own script. Oh cool, what's it called? Alien vs. Piranha 2 The Spawning. Not the Abyss. Aliens vs. The Abyss doesn't even sound like a ripoff. Nah, uh, that's what they'd be expecting. Gotta keep them on their toes.